Welcome to the Clark DeHart Expedition. I'm Clark. Now March is a time of change here in the Appalachian Mountains. It's when late winter gives rise to early spring, and bees to bullfrogs begin their courtship rituals. Now for one species, this isn't a journey of a thousand miles, but one from deep underground to the surface world. This is the March of the Salamander. We can go as far as the, uh, the what's it called? We're halfway there. Yeah, let's do this, Clark. Okay. So, this is what we're out here on this spring, kind of cold, rainy night. It's a spotted salamander. We scooped him out of the ponds to see him a little bit better. We're going to try to handle him or her with a lot of care and return them back to the same pond later. I just want to uh, take some measurements and actually uh, a health checkup because salamanders and other amphibians are having a really tough time. There's something called chytrid, which is a fungal infection that is infecting millions and millions of amphibians around the world. It's a worldwide epidemic and a lot of these guys are going extinct in our lifetimes. And so it's a great chance to geotag where we find these salamanders so citizen scientists and biologists around the world can keep track of their movements or reproduction and also see where they are still thriving and maybe where they have died out unfortunately. So it's finally stopped raining a little bit and we moved off from the pond just a little bit to give the uh, wood frogs and spring peepers that might have been in the pond a little break from our presence. Um, this time I want to uh, grab some quick measurements of the salamander that we found. The first thing is I'm wearing nitrile gloves. Uh, you should never touch a amphibian and risk some contamination, both to you and the amphibian. Um, gloves are great to make sure you don't get salmonella. It also protects the amphibian from any sort of um, oils, grimes, those things that are, might be on your fingers that uh, really shouldn't touch them, as well as I'm gonna be as delicate as possible with this animal because, you know, it's fragile. I don't wanna hurt it. I don't wanna stress it out too much. So I'm gonna grab them from our container. Do you know what? This is a spotted salamander. It's Ambistoma maculatum. If you ever heard of immaculate, well, this is the opposite. It is uh, maculate, which means it has spots. As you can see, there's some faint yellow spots marking the border of this animal. Um, in the uh, Ambistoma salamanders, they're also called mole salamanders, and that's because they're fossorial. Fossorial is a term we give to animals that live underground. So if you think about these animals really come up to the surface one week, a year maybe, um, and that's really just to breed. Most of the time that they're spending uh, they're here underground eating uh, arthropods and uh, earthworms and, and other small, small invertebrates. And they will come out once a year with the spring warm rains. And it's a extremely rare glimpse into this wild world of the mole salamander, really. And he's, he's a little bit cold right now. Um, I'm going to release them really soon, but like I said, I wanted to take some measurements. So I have my clipboard and um, spotted salamanders can grow up to, I think it's like 10 inches. Usually they're about seven average, but six to 10 um, is, is really good size. So I'm um, going to be really gentle here, trying to sort of stretch out his body. Oh, oh. Um, you know what? I think he's about eight inches long. I'm going to round it because I don't want to stress him. I mean, this is an amazing animal. He is a lungless salamander, meaning that he doesn't live in the water. He gets his oxygen from being moist. And that's one of the really important things that we're trying to do, and one of the reasons that he came out tonight. The ground moistened up. He's able to come to the surface for the very first time in a year to 
breed. And really, I'll, I'll flip them over really quickly if you want to come in here close, and we'll determine uh, what the sex of this animal is. Because underneath there, you can see there's a swollen area at the base of his tail. And during the breeding season, the males get that area uh, become swollen. And it's where the hormones are, it's where the pheromones are, it's where he's going to create the spermatoforms that the females are going to pick up. And I think that I've handled him enough, I don't want to stress him. I am going to release him back into the area I found him. And if he's lucky, he'll find a lucky female salamander. And he will continue his courtship ritual. Put him on the edge, and he might go back in the deeper water if he wants. But I think that makes a successful night of salamander watching down here. From habitat destruction to pollution, and now the new chytrid fungus, there is an epidemic of extinction that's going on here in the Appalachian Mountains with our precious amphibian species. And it's really up to us to change all of that. We really have to find ways to stop tearing down the forests which are integral to these amphibian habitats. And we need to figure out how to stop acid rain pollution and other pollution that we're pumping into these environments. And more importantly, if we want these amphibians to continue into the next 100 years or more, we have to find ways to curtail the spread of this chytrid fungus and really learn more about it because that seems to be the last sort of nail in the coffin for these amphibian species. Thank you for watching the Clark D. Hart Expedition. Remember to stay wild.